Hi everybody. Today I'll be talking about alcohol misuse and my name is Corey Cascalera, um, doc student in counseling psychology and a behavioral health consultant at Family Medicine Center in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So today this is our agenda. First I'll tell you what alcohol misuse is. We'll talk about some of the short-term and long-term risks related to alcohol misuse give you some different ways that you can consider do you drink too much how you can get help some of the treatment options that are available if you want to get help if you're looking to reduce the harm without stopping drinking completely i provide some tips on cutting back and ways that you can reduce your risk if you do drink um throughout this presentation i will talk about units of alcohol and you can see over to the right here that there are different units of alcohol. Typically one unit is equal to um, 350 milliliters of beer or 150 milliliters of wine. But be mindful that there are some ways of drinking that have multiple units. So if you drink a bottle of wine, that's five units of alcohol. And units of alcohol are important for uh, reducing your risk. So we'll talk about that later, but keep that in mind. It's about one beer or about half a glass of um, wine. So alcohol misuse is actually a way of drinking that is harmful. It's You can also think about it as needing alcohol to function, right? Waking up in the morning and needing alcohol to get rid of a hangover. Alcohol misuse can actually lead to health risks, and those health risks become greater the more often you drink. So if you're drinking regularly, it's more likely that the risk will occur. And there's a spectrum of alcohol use. So people who have an alcohol use disorder are not necessarily always at the severe end of the spectrum. It can be kind of mild. So some of the short-term risks include accidents and injury, violence, right? So you can be in a situation where you become a violent person or you're a victim of violence, uh, losing your capacity to provide judgment. So having unprotected sex when that's something you wouldn't normally do, losing your possessions and even being poisoned by alcohol, depending on how much you smoke. And of course, if you engage in binge drinking, these risks increase. So binge drinking is in drinking a lot of alcohol in a short amount of time. Uh, this is really popular with certain populations such as in the college environment. So just be mindful that that does increase these short-term risks. In the long-term, over years, if you continue to drink a lot of alcohol in a way that is harmful, in a way that invites you to think that you need alcohol, this can lead to liver disease, heart disease, even stroke, Pan pancreatitis has been associated with um, alcohol misuse, including cancer, right? So there's lots of different cancer, even breast cancer. We, we might not even think that alcohol would affect um, breast development, but actually alcohol can impact the body overall. And of course, if you're somebody who can become pregnant, then there are birth defects associated with drinking while you are pregnant. There's also social risk, right? You can lose relationships, sever long-term relationships that have been there for most of your life and um, financial consequences such as becoming unemployed. Now, how do you know if you drink too much? Well, here are some indicators that might help you think that mm, maybe I'm misusing alcohol. If you feel like you should cut back, that's one sign. If people in your life are talking about how much you drink, if you're feeling guilty or bad about the amount of drinking that you have. Uh, if you need a drink first thing in the morning to reduce your hangover, if you find yourself calling out of work a lot or missing other obligations, forgetting to pick the kids up from school. And of course, if there's any physical symptoms related to dependence, that is a sign that you're drinking too much, such as being depressed or having sleep problems, even having tremors, which is your hands or parts of your body shaking uncontrollably. So if you're finding that you are drinking too much, there are, the good news is that you can get help. And so you can talk to your doctor, you can talk to your spiritual leader, if that's something that resonates with you. Of course, visit the emergency room if it's an acute crisis. You can also Google Alcoholics Anonymous and find a meeting near you. And if you're unable to travel because you live in a rural area or there's not a lot of Alcoholic Anonymous meetings, you can actually go to intherooms.com to find help with alcohol misuse. There is treatment for alcohol misuse, and so that's a good sign. You can engage in counseling and therapy. Um, group therapy is often a common modality. 
detoxification, right? So going to detox, getting the alcohol out of your body. You won't want to quit alcohol cold turkey, especially if you've gotten to the point where you're shaking and seeing things or hearing things. Um, if you're feeling super depressed due to alcohol, you're going to want to get some professional help to make sure that alcohol leaves your body at a safe rate. And there's also medications that can help you stop using alcohol in a way that's harmful to you. Um, I have them listed here. And you can ask your doctor about those medications. Your primary care provider would be a good person to talk to. <clears throat> so if you don't want to stop drinking completely, that's okay. You can also think about ways that you can start cutting back. And here are some different ways that you might cut back your alcohol use. You can make a drinking plan, for example. Decide how much you're going to drink and when. You can drink one unit of alcohol and then drink a glass of water, right? So alternate. Set a budget. How much are you actually going to spend on your alcohol? You might drink a smaller serving. If you're somebody who's drinking a bottle of wine on the weekends, you might just have one glass of wine on Friday, maybe a second glass of wine on Saturday. It's helpful to log your drinking. So if you're somebody who likes to keep a journal or track things down, there are apps that you can use to track how much you're drinking. It's also helpful to tell others how much you're drinking because that will bring it to the forefront of your mind. And sometimes we're not very aware of how much we're drinking. You can keep alcohol outside of the home. Staying busy helps a lot. Plan for triggers. There are some parts in life where there's going to be a lot of triggers, right? So maybe family gatherings are, there's a lot of drinking that happens there. So come up with a plan of what you can do if you're in that environment. To reduce your risk, um, it's important to realize that there's no safe amount of alcohol, right? So any amount of alcohol will incur some risk for um, unfavorable effects. But in general, it, you can stay in a somewhat less risky range by drinking less than 14 units of alcohol a week. So that's less than 14 beers, standard beer cans a week. Um, and if you're drinking 14 units, um, remember that binge drinking will increase your risk. So spread those 14 units out over the week. Don't drink them all in one sitting. It's important to have alcohol free days. There's days in the week that you can designate that I'm not going to drink any alcohol. And of course, choosing a lower strength drink is always a good option. So if you're somebody who's drinking hard liquor, you might switch over to beer to reduce your risk. Here's some references to show that this stuff is backed by science and thanks so much.